Hello, welcome to the self-learning platform by Dr. Shishma Singh. Today we are going to start Unit D, Classification of Social Movements, including new, new social movements. First of all, we have introduction about the unit. Classification is a way of selecting and arranging facts or data. It is a way to give meanings to one's observations. There is no the way of classifying any social phenomena, process or group of people. Social movements also do not have the only one way of classification. No classification is sacrosanct and universal acceptable by all the scholars and activities. Classification is related to theoretical framework and the question that one wants to understand. Same moment can be classified in several ways depending upon the focus of the study. For instance, a collective struggle of people raising issue of pollution can be called environmental movement and also human right movement or middle class movement or reformist movement or new social movement. In this unit, we shall explain some of the typologies of movements as used by different scholars and underlying rationally for such taxonomy. Now let us move to the next point, reform, rebellion and revolution. Generally, those who follow Marxist framework examine social movements in terms of they are potentialities for revolutionary transformation in society. They characterize the movements in reference to not only of the participants and leaders, ideological as well as they are immediate and long term objectives, but also the scholars' own expectations from the social movement. In this framework, the movements are classified on the basis of what they attain or likely to attain and the objectives of the collective action against the political system. According to this theoretical perspective, social movements are of three types, revolt or rebellion, reform and revolution. Revolt or rebellion protest against the political system or regime and may also make attempts to change in the authority, government or ruling elite rulers. But it does not question nor it aims at changing the political system. In short, the movement is against the regime rather than the system. A revolt is a challenge to political authority aimed at overthrowing the government. A rebellion is an attack on existing authority without any intention of seizing state power to change the system. The social moment which aims at bringing certain changes in the system and not transforming the system completely is called the reformist movement. Such movements question the functioning of political institutions and build pressure on the government to introduce certain changes in their structure and procedures. While doing so, they do not question the political system as a whole, nor do they relate a political institution with the larger political structure. In other words, they focus on reforming a particular part of an institution or the system. For example, the movement that primarily aims at changing the election rules and procedures does not relate elections with the economic structure and power relationship in society. In that sense, it is reformist movement or various social reform movements try to reform certain customs like child marriage or dowry norms such as animal sacrifice, untouchability or social arrangements such as hierarchical order in status and social mobility 
rather than challenging the whole social order based on pollution and purity around the principle of inequality. When women's movements struggle to have reservation for women in the parliament, it is reformist movement aiming at changing the representation system. Reform does not challenge the political system per se. It attempts to bring about changes in the relation between the parts of the system in order to make it more efficient, responsive and workable. In a revolution, a section or sections of society launch an organized struggle to overthrow not only the established government and regime but also socio-economic structure which sustains it and replace the structure by an alternative social order. For instance, the next next-lived movement in, is not only challenging the particular government but aims at overthrowing the state which is federal or semi-federal and desires to establish communist state or the Dalit movement aims at transforming social order based on caste system and desires to create egalitarian social system. In the same way, when women movement challenges patriarchy in society and attempts its abolition, then it becomes revolutionary movement. Nature of social movements often overlaps. Many movements undergo change in the course of time. Some apparently reformist movement may take revolutionary course and some which begin with revolutionary agenda become reformist also. All social movements do not necessarily begin with clear objectives in terms of the maintenance or the transformation of the system. They often get shaped in the process through the leaders, participants and ideology. Now we are going to discuss next point, new social movements. The classification based on Marxist theoretical framework focusing on class structure of the participants with ultimate objectives to overthrow the present state aiming at bringing total change in production relation is considered as old social movement. They are also called classical movements. These movements, it is argued, primarily focus on the state power and on class consciousness of the participants. The examples of the peasant or working class movement are against the federal, semi-federal economic structure fall in this category. As against this, some of the recent movement, particularly in and after the 1960s, in the Europe, such as peace movement, ecological movement, women's movement, etc., are called new social movements. In India, the movements around the issue of identity, Dalit, Adivasi, women, human rights, environment, etc., are also labeled as the new social movements. In one sense, they are called new social movements because they have raised the issue relating to identity and autonomy, which are non-class issue and do not confront with the state. They are the new forms of social movement. However, it is simplistic to say that in the past, people did not raise and struggle for identity and autonomy. For instance, Birsa Munda movement in Chota Nagpur during the 1830s was the struggle to resist the intervention of the British state in their life. It was the movement to protect their autonomy. According to K.S. Singh, the movement aimed at liquidation of the racial enemies, the Dikus, European missionaries and officials, and the native Christians. The Mundas would recover their lost kingdom. There will be enough to eat, no famine. The people li will live together in love. 
so it is not correct to say in the past people did not struggle for identity and autonomy in fact and andre gunter frank and marta fenny argue that the classical working class movement are the product of 19th century industrial society on the other hand peasant localist community ethnic nationalist religious and even feminist movements movement have existed for centuries and even millennia in many part of the world therefore the old and new are not related to time they differ in their feature the scholars who reject the framework of the classical or marxist framework identify the following characteristics of the new social movements the new social movements nsm are not directing their collective action to state power they are concerned with individual and collective morality and regunder frank and marta fonis find that nsm is share the force of morality and a sense of injustice justice in individual motivation and the force of social mobilization in developing social power individual membership or participation and motivation in all sorts of social movements contain a strong moral component and defensive concern with justice in the social and world order the new social movements are not class based they are multi class in fact they do not subscribe to the theory that society is divided on class line and the classes are antagonistic the new social movements are either ethnic or nationalist and plural women movements is an example gail ombert treats the contemporary farmers movements as new and non class movement it is a movement of small and poor as well as middle and rich farmers these movements she argues also have support of agriculture laborers it also has support of shopkeepers and also of high and low caste she argues ideologies of the farmers movement thus provided a clear challenge to marxism that limited its analysis only to capital labor struggles as defined within a realms of commodity exchange they looked to a wider arena of capital accumulation and economic exploitation taking into account factors other than class defined in the narrow sense and in many ways their thrust coincided with that of the developing environmental movement the new social movements are confined to and concerned with civil society according to the proponent of nsm civil society is getting diminished its social space is suffering a shrinkage and social of the civil society is eroded by the controlling ability of the state the expansion of the state in the contemporary setting coincides with the expansion of market state and market are seen as two institutions making in roads into all aspects of the citizens life under the combined impact of the forces of the state and the market society grows helpless consequently the nsmes raise the issue of the self defense of the community and society against the increasing expansion of the state apparatuses agencies of surveillance and social control nsmes are not around economic issues of land wages or property they are primarily concerned with self identity and autonomy of an individual and community against the state market and social institutions therefore dalit movement for dignity 
and adivasi movement for their autonomy are treated as nsm nsmes are not concerned with the benefit of one class or group they are concerned for the good of every one irrespective of class environmental movement in that sense according to some scholars is nsma as it does not raise the issue of a particular class for some smas are grassroots or micro movements and do not have to capture state power on their agenda they are democratic in their organizational structure according to jean cosen an assamese rage issue which emerged from society rather than from state and economy they are concerned with democratization in day to day life they focus on communication and identity according to rajendra singh the aim of nsme is to recognize the relations between state society and economy and to create a public space in which democratic discourse on autonomy and freedom of individual and collectiveness their identities and orientations could be discussed and examined in its many expressions nsmes generally confine themselves to social action with the spirit of what colin calls self limited radicalism now we move to next point issue based movements some of those who follow structure function approach classify social movements on the basis of issues around which people are mobilized people do get mobilized around a number of issues from local and immediate to systematic and long term they vary from time to time and from society to society sometimes the issue based classification treat different issue separately sometimes issues are conceptualized in theoretical framework such as developmental livelihood human right issue or political economic cultural and social issues or local regional and national issues classification of the issue depend upon the scholar's perspective for instance the movement of the dam affected people can be called as rehabilitation movement of dam affecting people and it can also be called an anti development movement or human right movement similarly struggles for the forest dwellers can be classified into forest movement civil rights or livelihood movement or movement for common resources the next point is classification by social categories those who follow marxist framework often classify social movement on the basis of classes such as peasant movement or rich peasant movement working class movement or middle class movement and so on those who follow cultural or community framework divide movement on the basis of communities such as ethnic movement western movement black movement dalit movement etc sometimes social categories are divided by region such as urban and rural movements may also be classified on economic as well as ethnic categories and also by issue together some other classify movements on the basis of the participants such as peasants tribal students women dalit etc in many cases the participants and issues go together now let us have summary of the unit classification is a tool for analysis it is closely related with theoretical framework hence classification of social movement vary from scholar to scholar depending upon his or her analytical framework important guide for classification is what do you want to find out 
or what is your purpose of classification nowadays social movements are classified into old or classical and new the former falls in, into marxist framework it is based on the objectives and class characters of the participants new social movements are those which are of non class and around the issues of identity and autonomy movements are also classified by issues and social class of the participants here we want to wind up today's lecture and we have come to the end of the unit thank you so much for your attention